guys, Stas here. In this video, we're going to talk fermentation 101. What is it? Why do we need it? And what happens when fermentation is taking place? On this channel, we've talked about a number of different topics surrounding fermentation, such as cleaning and sanitizing, how to make a yeast starter, dealing with stuck fermentations, hydrometers and refractometers, as well as how to brew and ferment beers and hard seltzers. I thought it was high time that we take a look at this very important step in all alcoholic and some non-alcoholic or low alcoholic beverages. Fermentation is a vital step in all alcoholic beverage production. It's also a very common in food industry, but for this video, we'll focus on the fermentation of beverages rather than foods. Whether we're talking about ginger beer, cider, beer, kombucha, hard lemonade, hard seltzer, vodka, bourbon, whiskey, wine, brandy, gin, etc. They all just wouldn't exist without fermentation. We often think that it's the brewer, winemaker or distiller that's responsible for making alcohol, but this is not true. The unsung hero of any great fermentation is yeast. Yeast is found just about everywhere on this planet and humans have been utilizing the process of fermentation for thousands of years. Probably the most common strain of yeast humans use is called Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is used in winemaking, baking, and brewing industries. There are other types of yeast and bacteria which humans have used to make fermented beverages, but these are outside of the scope of this video. So what happens during fermentation? Saccharomyces cerevisiae, AKA brewer's yeast, is added to a cool batch of wort for beer, must for wine, wash for spirits. Wort, must, and wash is all essentially the same thing. It, it basically means a fermentable liquid. Just different words for different industries. This wort, must, or wash has been carefully prepared by the brewer or winemaker so that it has just the right combination of flavors, aromas, and most importantly, fermentable sugars. It's also important to make sure that the wort must wash is free of any contaminants such as wild yeasts or bacteria. Again, in certain situations, brewers and winemakers may choose to deliberately use wild yeast and bacteria, but this is largely the exception rather than the rule. The process of using wild yeast and bacteria is called spontaneous fermentation and is a whole other topic for a whole nother video. Pasteurization of the wort, must or wash is most commonly done using heat, boiling the wort before cooling, and an acid-based sanitizer is frequently used to ensure that the equipment is also free of contamination. Phase one. Once the yeast is added to the wort, must or wash, the yeast begins to assess its surroundings and starts to prepare itself to metabolize the food and nutrients around it. This phase is often called the lag phase. While it can look like there isn't anything happening, the yeast cells are busy taking in available oxygen and nutrients to prepare for the next phase, high growth. Phase two. During the high growth phase, each yeast cell begins to multiply, budding new cells and metabolizing different sugars while outputting CO2 and ethyl alcohol as primary waste products. The high growth phase is what most people think of when they think of fermentation. You can see foam or krausen forming on the top of the fermenting beverage, bubbles of CO2 rising up and often chunks of yeast, protein and other organic matter floating around in the fermenter. As the yeast metabolizes sugars in the wort must wash, producing alcohol, CO2 and other compounds as waste, the specific gravity drops. The chemical process yeast used to metabolize the sugars mean that they output alcohol and CO2 at a very predictable rate versus the amount of sugar they consume. This allows brewers and winemakers to determine the ABV of their fermented beverage, given the starting gravity and the finishing gravity. Once the yeast have metabolized all the sugars available to them, they turn to other less desirable sources of food, such as other byproducts of fermentation, including acetaldehyde and diacetyl. Healthy yeast will continue searching for available food until there is nothing left for them to metabolize. When there is no more food, yeast cells go into hibernation and flocculate, meaning they fall out of solution. It is the brewer's and winemaker's responsibility to pitch enough healthy yeast to complete their fermentation. 
They can use temperature control to help the yeast along the way. If there is not enough yeast or the yeast's health is poor, the yeast will run out of energy before full fermentation is complete, leading to stuck fermentations or off flavours in the finished beverage. There are many other things that happen during fermentation. The creation of alcohol inhibits the growth of bacteria and other pathogens. The act of fermentation lowers the pH. This can also help inhibit the growth of bacteria and pathogens. As well as during fermentation, the yeast can give off esters and phenolics, which can enhance the flavour and aroma of the final beverage. Let's take a look at the overall production process of a range of different alcoholic beverages and look at what's the same and what's different. These are very broad overviews of the process of making these beverages and should be taken as such. There are many different methods of creating each of these beverages. Beer. Brewers create a fermentable work by using malted barley and other adjuncts such as wheat, corn, oats, sugar, etc. They balance the flavor with hops. That gets boiled, then chilled, yeast is pitched, fermentation occurs, packages. Cider. Press sugary juice from fruit, sometimes sugar is added, pasteurize or sanitize with heat, then chill, pitch the yeast, ferment, package. Hard seltzer. Make sugary wash, pasteurize, sanitize with heat, chill, pitch the yeast, ferment, and package. Whiskey. Brewers create a fermentable wort using malted barley and other adjuncts such as wheat, corn, oats, sugar. It's the same as beer, except without the hops. This is then pasteurized and sanitized with heat. This wort is then chilled, yeast is pitched, fermentation happens. But then it's passed through a pot still, usually twice, once for a stripping run, one for a spirit run. The cuts from the spirit run is then blended and diluted to the desired ABV and is matured in oak barrels for two or more years. And then it's packaged. Vodka. Brewers create a fermentable wort or wash from either wheat, sugar, or combination of other fermentables. This is then pasteurized with heat and chilled. Yeast is pitched, fermentation happens. This is then passed through a reflux still uh, to concentrate the alcohol to 95% ABV or above. The cuts from this are then are blended and diluted down to the desired ABV and packaged. So you can see that fermentation is a fundamental process that all alcoholic beverages go through. By better understanding what happens during fermentation, you can give your yeast the right environment so that you can make the best product possible. I hope you found this introduction to fermentation interesting. If you did, give a like and comment down below with any questions uh, that you might have. The next month's video, I'll be talking to a local craft distiller about his products and the process and art of distillation. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure you're subscribed. And if you have any questions that you would like me to ask, put them down below. So until then, this has been Stas from Stas Brewing with another video brought to you by Beer Co. Cheers.